Subhash, one of the real tests to understand what consciousness is, is to ask the question, can consciousness be instantiated, as they say, in non-biological systems? Consciousness, if one were to start constructing machines which uh, can mimic uh, humans, for example, in terms of uh, their capacity to uh, be aware of themselves, uh, in my view, uh, cannot be non-biological because machines follow instru instructions, uh, machines follow prescriptions, and prescriptions are all logical. And consciousness has aspects where uh, it's able to hold opposites at the same time, or it has aspects which are sort of uh, um, contradictory uh, to each other. And therefore, in my view, uh, machines will never be conscious. Aren't you, though, limiting your analysis based on today's computers? Because we've already seen massive parallel computing, the possibility of quantum computing. You're an expert in computation, indeed, in quantum computing. Uh, aren't you artificially limiting what computers can do? Well, the idea behind uh, the, uh, the view that uh, uh, computers could eventually become conscious is that consciousness is an emergent property, that when computers become uh, very complex, when they have a very huge number of interconnections which parallel the number of interconnections between the neurons inside the brain, then somehow, in some strange manner, self-awareness would arise. But I don't see uh, how one can logically support that position, because just, just because the number of interconnections has crossed a certain uh, level. Uh, Self-awareness as a phenomenon should arise by itself. To me, uh, is not a defensible position. So in my view, um, biological organisms, machines, have certain aspects because of the very nature biological systems are put together, which is different from how machines are organized. And therefore, perhaps, there could be future machines, but they are likely to be biological machines. We might be uh, able to learn how to do various things with DNA or maybe some other primitive of, of life which would uh, take us to machines which are biological but conscious and different from the machines of the kind that we have right now. So your claim is, is that human beings may be able to create um, non-human uh, consciousness uh, by creating biological machines, so to speak, based on bi but, but what is it about biology that differentiates it from non-biology? Aren't you, uh, uh, shall we say, a, 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 a carbon chauvinist? Well, um, biology, uh, one, one has to sort of step back and try to see why is uh, the brain machine conscious when the silicon machine is not uh, conscious. And in principle, you're saying cannot be conscious. In principle, it cannot be conscious because the brain machine has certain aspects which are very different from that of the silicon machine. And what are those aspects? First of all, the brain machine is self-organizing. It uh, does not respond to instructions. It actually changes uh, in response to its environment. So it's uh, that self-organizational aspect which is different from that of any other uh, machine designed by engineers which are supposed to respond in exactly the same way to um, inputs which for which uh, it has been programmed. Isn't that just an engineering issue that it, it can be a, a programmed to, to, to react to its uh, environment and can be react, uh, programmed to change and, and interact and to learn? I mean, there's progress being made in those areas right now. Yeah, but that's only one aspect. And what is the other aspect? The other aspect is that uh, there appears to be a quantum mechanical basis to the brain machine that the brain has two uh, hierarchical layers, one which is neural, which is where our perceptions in our mind are formed, sure. and there is a deeper layer which appears to be quantum mechanical. And if it's, it's that deeper layer which sets it apart, because that quantum mechanical ground, so to speak, seems to have 
uh, a unity across all um, sentient beings. And that is what appears to take us to all the strange behavior that one can associate with consciousness. So, so your claim that uh, non-biological machines cannot be conscious is based on a claim that uh, quantum uh, mechanics are uh, in operation in these biological systems in a different way than they're operating in this chair or the floor or something else. I mean, because quantum mechanical uh, uh, mechanisms occur in everything. That's what creates reality. Uh, but you're saying that in, 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 in brains it's working differently. Yeah, because in, in uh, quantum mechanics as it works on in ordinary materials, you know, the materials that we, the furniture, for example, chairs, etc., is at the basis of the structure. Yes. But there is no quantum mechanical coherent uh, phenomenon that is associated with the chair with which one can interact. While there appears to be at the substratum level of the brain, by virtue of some virtual particles that are created, which are in a state of coherence, which is what appears to be associated with self-awareness. Okay, that, that's a controversial point. I think you'd admit that. This is not a common view. Right. Uh, it is a view that's held by others besides yourself. But even if I give you that, I said, I'm gonna give you that as assumption, knowing that I don't necessarily agree with it, I don't agree with it, but if I give it to you, and I still say, okay, let's assume you're correct. Quantum mechanics is working in brains differently than it's working in the chair. Still, it's a physical process. And why couldn't that be uh, uh, manipulated at some point in engineering so that the same quantum mechanical process would be operating in a machine? If it's a, if it's a physical process, which quantum mechanics is, it is ultimately controllable by engineering. Well, it's a question of degree. The number of uh, neurons in the brain is equal to the number of stars in the Milky Way. And the size is so much that one can uh, set up an argument that you would not have the capacity to control uh, all the interconnections between this. So although in theory one could make the argument that certainly uh, the brain is a machine and therefore in principle one could make certain modifications and therefore engineer it and possibly while maintaining uh, awareness and so on. And in, in certain sense that's being done. And perhaps neuroscience would help us get connected to some additional capacities by adding uh, certain elements to the processing that we can do. And in, in a certain sense, perhaps the internet has already done it. You know, now we don't even remember everything because we don't need to. Sure, we can sure. always refer to... Sure, it's an enhancement, uh, no question. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So we can do that. But we are not talking here of the content of, inf of consciousness, yes. but rather of consciousness itself. Mm -hmm. Contents of right. information can be manipulated, can be enhanced, and Education is partly that, but uh, what we are talking of is the very nature of consciousness. That consciousness uh, in our own uh, perceptions is like a witness, which is witnessing what unfolds in our minds as contents. But don't you need to assume that there is something beyond the physical in your understanding of consciousness in order to be internally consistent that consciousness must be biological and cannot be non-biological? Uh, consciousness by itself cannot be physical because we must distinguish between contents of consciousness and consciousness itself. Now machines uh, deal with contents so we can store information or we can create uh, new kinds of machines where huge amounts of information could be stored. But the awareness which is able to pick uh, and choose out of all the information that is in the machine cannot be a part of the physical basis of the machine. And this is what distinguishes brains as a machine from the machines that engineers have built. So what is that non-physical thing? Because most neuroscientists say that uh, you're just postulating nonsense. Well, um, um, According to um, uh, mainstream science, 
uh, there are uh, different emergent phenomena, just as uh, chemist chemistry emerges out of physics and biology sure. emerges out of uh, All chemistry. All of which are explainable in the physical world in some sense. Yeah. Right. But there uh, are other uh, planes or abstractions. For example, the very fact that uh, we are um, um, biological systems, or physical systems and biological systems, and then inside our brains there is electrical activity, and those uh, patterns of electrical activity give rise to mathematical forms and ideas which, in an amazing way, uh, are able to make sense of the world. Now that itself is absolutely improbable on yeah. physical grounds and that. therefore there are other states which are not captured by uh, physical uh, structures itself which uh, should be at the basis of consciousness. Is your view in any way informed by the Vedantic traditions? According to the Vedantic view there are two kinds of sciences. One are the so-called ordinary sciences which are uh, based on associations between things and properties that tie these things such as physics or chemistry or biology or grammar or what have you. Now according to Vedanta there has got to be another science which is not captured through these associations and this is the science of the experiencing self because the experiencing self will never be able to see itself as an object. 